Attendance for last week's dark night at the shoe with over 107,000 seeing Ohio State v. Penn State. Tomorrow night in New Jersey, the top ranked Buckeyes will play in front of a crowd about half that. Yet, it'll be a sellout for Rutgers, their fourth since joining the Big Ten last season. And as undefeated OSU prepares for the 3-3 three three Scarlet Knights, Mark takes a look at one of the unsung heroes of the defending champs. Former Ohio State head coach Jim Tressel has been quoted as saying the punt is the most important play in football. While current Buckeye head coach Urban Meyer won't go that far, his teams do put a heavy emphasis on field position, which is where punting can change a game. As evidenced last week against Penn State, when junior punter Cameron Johnston earned Ohio State's special teams Player of the Week honors. It's nice to be able to do my job and go out there and win, um, sort of when, they, when they need me, so type of thing. So no, it's just real rewarding to be able to do what you practice all week and go out there and do it in the game, so it was good. Nah, I just, I just try and do what i got to do, so yeah, I don't really know a lot of so I just do my job and um, yeah, that's the main thing. He's really, really good at his job. His job is to drop the ball on the eight-yard line, and I think they had two catches on the eight and uh, two other ones we downed inside the eight. Yeah, down a punt on the two and the four and two fair catches on the eight, very, very, and then uh, I want to say a 56-yard punt against a very, very good returner, 56-yard uh, punt that uh, we forced a fair catch. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I think I've got a lot more to improve on, so um, the pooch has been good to be able to get in there, but sort of the place where we can place him a little better directionally, but um, no, it's just good to be able to give Jeff Green and Bryce and those guys a chance to get down there and down them. So. It's nothing new for the Australian. Last year, he would have finished in the top 10 in the nation in punting, but didn't have enough kicks to qualify. Still, his 45-yard average was best in the Big Ten, and this year, averaging over 46 yards per punt, he's again atop the conference and does have enough kicks to qualify for 10th in the NCAA. One number OSU wouldn't mind seeing go down. Interestingly enough, Rutgers has an Australian punter on their roster as well, Joey Roth, although he is... Not either the first or second string punter. Mike Miller, who's our first string Buckeye insider, joins us now. And Mike, this Rutgers team is three and three. Their wins are against Norfolk State, which is mm -hmm. one double A FCS. Right. Kansas, which isn't very good. No. And Indiana in dramatic fashion. Yep. However, a couple weeks ago, at home against Michigan State, they took the Spartans right down to the wire. So a three and three Rutgers team that perhaps is maybe better than their record, or maybe 3-3 three and three is a pretty solid indicator of their talent. I would probably say it's a solid indicator of their talent, to be honest with you, Mark. But they do have some talent, guys that can make plays offensively. Paul James is a veteran running back who's put up some good yardage historically through his career. They have a couple of other guys, Hicks and Martin. I mean, collectively, it's a thousand yard back if you want to look at it that way. And a, and a veteran quarterback and a really good wide receiver. Any team with that kind of component offensively can put some points on the board. Now, one thing that uh, Ohio State uh, emphasized, particularly on the offensive side of all yep. the last couple of weeks, is red zone production and penalties. Last two weeks, 12 of 12 in the red zone. They've cut down on the penalties, but they've also had some slow starts. Now, on the year, Ohio State's outscoring opponents, I think, 38-17 in the first quarter. However, in their three Big Ten games, they've been outscored yep. in the first quarter by their opponents 13-7. to So, it'll be interesting to see if getting off to a quick start is part of the emphasis this week, and if it carries over from practice. Yeah, I surely hope it is. And historically, that's been one of Urban Meyer's uh, little mantras about getting off to a quicker start. Let's face it, last week it could have easily uh, been 10 to nothing Penn State if not for a, a holding call against the Nittany Lions. And last year there were occasions where the Buckeyes were slow out of the gate and they did make, a, make it a point of emphasis. I think it's important, especially when you're on the road in, in a hostile atmosphere like will be the case uh, Saturday night over in New Jersey so yeah I want the Buckeyes to get out of the gate quickly. Well it's interesting that you bring up the the holding call that negated a touchdown at the time we talked about on the field Saturday yeah. how that was kind of similar to what happened at Michigan State and how Michigan State didn't get that touchdown then yeah. Ohio State went ahead and got the score and really was the leaping point off for, for Ohio State season perhaps that's a similar situation now this year with a touchdown being negated because then Ohio State came right down and scored. 
Well, absolutely. I mean, you, it puts you into an adverse situation that for a moment you pause, you think, wow, this, can, this is really bad for us. Then you count your blessings that it's not quite as bad as it, as it appears to be. But nevertheless, it maybe just serves to get the Buckeyes. They're no different than anybody else. A little more focused and understanding that as the game moves forward, you're losing time. It's time to, it's time to go. And of course, Tuesday, the big news, JT Barrett named the starting quarterback yep. for Ohio State. Now, Interesting was before Urban Meyer made that announcement, Rutgers head coach Kyle Flood said, yeah, we got to prepare for both Cardell Jones and JT Barrett. Did Urban Meyer maybe tip his hand too soon in this situation? I don't think so, uh, but I think Kyle Flood is correct that you might not necessarily see Cardell Jones just completely relegated to the bench. Urban Meyer may have a little bit of fun with this also. If there are situations where the Buckeyes have even as little as a one touchdown lead, you might see suddenly Cardale come into the mix. Let's face it, there's only five games left in the regular season. Why not continue to play both quarterbacks? What do fans need to know about this Rutgers team? I think they, what they need to know about Rutgers, Mark, is generally that Rutgers can score some points. And any team that can put points on the board can change the complexion of the game at any moment in time. But they also need to know that Rutgers defensively, there's a reason they have a really good linebacker with a lot of tackles. It's because they're not that great up front with their defensive front. If Ohio State takes care of the ball, I think the Buckeyes can score a lot more points than Rutgers, and it could be a big night Saturday. And Rutgers hoping for a special night, a special atmosphere. It'll be the fifth time they've played the number one ranked team in the nation. They've never beaten a number one ranked team in the nation. In fact, they only have ten or nine wins over yeah. ranked teams, period. Trying to get ten. Of course, wow. we'll have much more on that game for you Sunday morning. Andy, back to you.